For years, I kept hearing stories of lynx stocked in the South, from East Texas and eastward. Canada lynx in the South. I heard that Canada lynx were released officially and quietly by government agencies. Sometimes it was framed as a state wildlife agency stocking program. Other times, as a rumor passed down from hunters, landowners, and other people living in the wilds of the South. So I went looking for proof, and I didn't find any. But the sightings didn't stop, and that's where the real story begins. The idea of lynx being stalked sort of made sense. People were describing an animal that was bigger than expected, something that didn't fit the typical bobcat mold, because that is the closest relative of the lynx. Something more intimidating. A secret release program sounded plausible if you didn't look into other explanations. But when you did look for evidence, it just wasn't there. There's no agency records, no transport permits, no contemporary newspaper accounts, no paper trail at all. If Canada Lynx had been stocked in the South, it would have required planning, funding, documentation, and oversight. So if Lynx weren't released, what are people seeing? While digging through cultural references to Lynx in the South, I can't help but go to Jerry Clower, the late great Southern comedian. His actual most famous joke talks about a coon hunter who went up a tree to push a coon off a limb into his hounds. And he went in to rear back and push a coon, but he says it wasn't a coon. It was, quote, a lynx. And he referred to it as a souped up wildcat. And that's really, really interesting. This is talking about Mississippi, a story, a lynx and a wildcat. In Mississippi and much of the South, a bobcat is still called a wildcat. Yet he delineated between a lynx and a bobcat. I heard the same kind of stories here in East Texas. So people were saying there's a bobcat. Yeah, well, we're calling a wildcat. There's a souped up version of it that was a lynx. What's interesting is when McClure wanted to emphasize the difference between this and a bobcat, or as he called it a wildcat, he called it a lynx. He wasn't using a biological distinction. He was using a word that already carried weight. For a long time, people talked about seeing lynx in the South. But what are they really seeing? In the 1800s and early 1900s in particular, Southern bobcats often had lynx tacked to them. Wildcat was the most popular term, bobcat, but also red lynx, bay lynx, swamp lynx, and brush lynx. They weren't separate species. The descriptions came because they looked different from area to area, and sometimes even an older animal might look different or things like that. Modern biology clears this up. Canada lynx and bobcats are very closely related, but they are not the same animal. Both belong to the genus lynx. That tells us they share a common lineage, but they are different animals. The Canada lynx is lynx canadensis, and the bobcat is lynx rufus, also meaning back to one of the regional names, red lynx. Canada lynx are cold weather specialists, extremely large, snowshoe-like feet, long legs, and thick coats. Bobcats are more generalist. They have smaller feet, more compact bodies. They have adapted diets. They live right in city limits and Areas like Houston, Texas, for example, Atlanta, Georgia, have bobcats living right in them, where lynx need a lot more isolation and true wild ground. Interestingly, Canada lynx range further south than people think, but not in the deep south. They're in northern New England, the upper Great Lakes, the northern Rockies, and the southernmost confirmed population is in New Mexico, which is really interesting. And that sort of surprises a lot of people uh, that there are a few that turn up in New Mexico. But in terms of places like Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, Tennessee, and Texas, I can find no records of actual Canada lynx and certainly no evidence of Canada lynx stockings. So what are people seeing? I believe they are seeing extra large bobcats. I have probably seen over 200 bobcats in my life. I mean, I saw three in one day on one hunting trip in South Texas while hunting for turkeys. Lots of bobcats in my state. I've seen them in North Texas, South Texas, East Texas, Louisiana, all over the place. Lots of bobcats, and a lot of them look very different. Some are more long-legged. Some have longer tails. Now, here's where I think a lot of people get confused. Some have longer ear tufts, and a trademark of the Canada lynx is the longer ear tufts. 
and people see one that typically is your little shorter type bobcat with a few faint spots, they may call that a bobcat. Then they see one that's larger and has longer ear tufts, maybe a little bit longer tail, a thicker coat in the winter, that would turn out to be a lynx in a lot of people's minds. And once again, coming back to a stocking program idea, this requires lots of planning, legal hurdles, and all kinds of stuff. There's just no evidence of that. There have been link stocking programs in Colorado and other northern states in their classic range, and sometimes even the southern tier of their range, but none in Georgia, Tennessee, Louisiana, Texas, and in East Texas where I first heard these stories. People sort of like to talk about stockings and i think sometimes to explain something maybe they've seen a lot of bobcats that you know like 15 20 pound bobcats they see one of these big 30 pound bobcats in the winter maybe a little longer ear tufts maybe the way to explain that is that they saw a lynx that was from some government program and that's sort of how i believe some of these stories start out there i don't think that people are trying to like lie to anyone i just think it's a regional name and even had a legendary comedian with a joke that's been heard by millions even on YouTube today and millions of album sales years ago, told all around the country, but it's just a bobcat. Now, some bobcats get very, very large. I have seen two bobcats, I know without any question, because I've had like bobcats in my arms. I've worked with captive bobcats, so I got a pretty good idea on size. It would push the 40 pound range. There's an official record of a 49 pound bobcat, which is just gigantic. There are a couple of others where people said there have been up to 60 pound bobcats. I don't know, but if you see a 40 pound bobcat in an area where they're normally 20, 25 pounds for a large one, you might think it's a lynx. And it is a lynx. It's lynx rufus, just not the Canada lynx. Very cool animals, both of these animals. Of course, a bobcat is a habitat generalist. It lives all over the place from the high desert uh, all the way into some of your deciduous forest and they are amazing creatures but there are no substantiated canada lynx populations in the american south the u.s fish and wildlife service has designated critical habitat for lynx and it went all the way into parts of new mexico so that's much further south than i would have normally thought that there might be lynx so very interesting reports. Have you ever seen an animal you thought might have been a lynx in the South? Or maybe have you ever just seen an awesome Canada lynx? We'd love for you in the comments to share your reports of seeing these majestic animals. A Canada lynx is way up on my list of animals that I want to see. I would love to see when I'm up in Colorado or in other areas. Amazing, majestic, special animals. One of my favorite wildcats that the good Lord created. And I'm excited to do this video, to sort of dispel rumors and talk about these great animals. Animals that do live in the United States, live in Canada, the Canada lynx, and of course the bobcat, where there's even overlapping range there. Cool, cool animals. So what do you think about this? Have you ever heard stories of lynx stockings or secret wildlife stockings in your area? Please share those and whatever you do. If you love this channel, you'll help me out a lot. If you subscribe to Chester Moore, wildlife journalist and investigator, I try to get to the bottom of these interesting stories and always raise awareness of wildlife and wildlife conservation. Thank you for watching.